Hey, you could call Antonio Brown a lot of things, but you will never, ever be able to call him inconsistent. He is who he is. He is who he always has been, and he will be who he always has continued to be. Antonio Brown and Antonio Brown fashion trolling the Baltimore Ravens after their loss against the Pittsburgh Steelers. Again, after their loss to the Steelers, which was their fifth game. Antonio Brown, he said the Ravens would be 4-0 with A.B. literally. So 4-0. After they lost to the Steelers, Antonio Brown said the Baltimore Ravens would be 4-0 if he was a member of the Ravens. And it don't get no more Antonio Brown than that, baby. And even though he got the, the numbers wrong a bit, uh, so it would have been 5-0. and Maybe he was thinking of 5-0. and uh, And I know I saw a lot of people replying, CTE, CTE, CTE. But anyway, um, it got you wondering. Like, I remember a couple years ago, we was thinking, I remember when Lamar Jackson was working out uh, with Hollywood and Antonio Brown. And I, I was somebody. I was like, hey, bring A.B. on to the Baltimore Ravens. He would be one of the best receivers that the Ravens ever had. Bring him. Bring him to the squad. And there were a lot of people say, oh, no, the Ravens wouldn't be able to control him. And da-da-da, he would turn out the locker room. And da-da-da, he would... But it obviously never happened. And then Lamar even came out and said, he was like, oh, yeah, I would love to have Antonio Brown on the team. Mark Ingram even came out and said, oh, yeah, I would love for Antonio Brown to join the Baltimore Ravens. But obviously it never happened. But it still got you to wondering what if. But Antonio Brown, he followed that up. After he said Ravens would be 4-0 with A.B. literally, he said, don't ever say it's Lamar Jackson's fault. Don't ever say it's a wide receiver like me. Don't ever say it's coincidence. So that went a couple of different ways. So don't ever say it's LJ's fault. I mean, the game against the Steelers, in my opinion, it really wasn't Lamar Jackson's fault because he did everything and more to win, but the wide receivers let it slip through their hands. And then, again, don't ever say it's a wide receiver like me. I mean, he, he got a lot of room to talk because Antonio Brown, when he was playing, he was one of the best. He put up historic numbers, and because of all the off-field stuff, I don't think he'll ever be in the Hall of Fame, but he has the numbers to be in the Hall of Fame. He got the stats to, to, to get there, but obviously he, he ain't going to be there because of everything else, everything else on the side. Uh, but then he finalized it with, the Ravens need A.B. A.B. don't need the Ravens. So he let it be known, like, no, 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 Baltimore needs me. I don't need Baltimore. But- that's just Antonio Brown, man. You know how it goes, man. So, uh, Antonio Brown got me to thinking, though. Um, how would they be with Antonio Brown? And, and then that kind of transitioned me to thinking about Odell Beckham Jr. And something that we brought up in the stream with Odell Beckham Jr. Because I know there's been a lot of discourse about Odell Beckham Jr. Um, and while Antonio Brown did bring this up, it got me to thinking about somebody who we're going to see this Sunday at 930 Eastern Time AM. So, y'all, we got to wake up early for this Ravens game. Well, some people on the other side of the world, they got to... It'll be late for them, but either way, us here in the States, we got to wake up early. But somebody who we're going to get an up-close personal view of is Mr. DeAndre Hopkins. And boy, this season, thus far through these first five games, it's brought up a big conversation like, man, should the Ravens have just waited a little bit and gone after DeAndre Hopkins? Should they? Should that have been the guy? And, and there was rumors that they were close to getting a deal done with him. And oh, boy, I, I loved it. I was so happy and so hyped about that. And Lamar Jackson, he was somebody that said, hey, I want both. I want both. And I wouldn't have been mad if they got both. Now, had we got DeAndre Hopkins, I do think it would have meant we did not get Zay Flowers. But we, we love Zay. We, we, we really do. Zay Flowers is a monster. He had a rough game the other day. All the receivers really had a rough game the other day. Uh, so we're looking for them to bounce back. They need to leave those hands that they came with in Pittsburgh. They need to leave them in Pittsburgh. Don't bring them to London. Don't, don't bring them over there. Please don't. But anyway, it got a lot of people thinking and talking about, oh, DeAndre Hopkins versus Odell Beckham Jr. and the impacts that DeAndre could have had that Odell Beckham Jr. just simply hasn't yet. Now, in my opinion... I do not think Odell Beckham Jr. was signed with the Baltimore Ravens for the regular season. And I know that may sound crazy to some people, uh, but I, I think, in my honest opinion, I think Odell Beckham Jr. was signed mainly for the postseason. Now, of course, I would expect him to contribute during the regular season and whatnot, but I think he was somebody that the Baltimore Ravens signed who has all the experience in the world at a position where they have continued to come up short in, that being wide receiver, but I think they signed him mainly for the postseason to really try to help them get over that hump because the defense has been doing their thing. Y'all seen the defense in the, the postseason. They've continued to make plays. They continue to put the Ravens offense in good position for the most part. They, they've been doing their thing, but it's just been the offense that has been the struggle. 
So you bring in Todd Munkin, new offensive coordinator, and you you bring in Odell Beckham Jr., somebody that's worked with Todd Munkin before and put up some decent numbers with Todd Munkin before. Um, but you bring him in as somebody who's a Super Bowl champion and a big name too, a big name to show, show the world like, hey, we're we willing to pay a receiver. We're willing to spend a little bit, bit more money, but we also willing to do what it takes to try to think a little outside the box when it comes to our success in the postseason. Now, is wide receiver the only issue in the postseason that it's been for the Ravens offense? No, not at all, but they, it could be better. So with Odell Beckham Jr., it should be better uh, because the Ravens, they've already shown, like, with the wide receivers that they've had, they, they can get there. They can get to the postseason. They can certainly make it there. But then in the postseason, that's when things change. And I don't think it's just all about the wide receiver position alone, but it's really about the Ravens' mentality, who they are. I think they needed somebody who has had the ultimate success and somebody who can just help shift the Ravens' focus, help shift the Ravens' mindset and their mentality when it comes to the playoffs. Uh, now, another thing with J.K. Dobbins, because we heard that, a couple weeks ago, J.K. Dobbins, him and Aaron Rodgers were rehabbing together. And, and I honestly thought, oh, maybe it's just a one-time thing. Maybe it's a one-off. But no, J.K. Dobbins, Aaron Rodgers was on the Pat McAfee show today, and, and J.K. Dobbins came. He said, hey, what you doing there, buddy? You, 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 you're not even working. You're just talking. He was telling that to Aaron Rodgers. I said, all right, J.K., I, hope, I like it. Holding Aaron Rodgers accountable. Hall of Fame, future Hall of Fame, a quarterback. You holding him accountable. I like that, J.K., I love it. Now, some people, so this this show that him and JK, they still working together, and they get all buddy, buddy, and whatnot. I'm like, all right, let's get it, baby. But some people got to thinking like, oh, they think Aaron Rodgers is being a little slick. They think this could be Aaron Rodgers doing a bit of recruiting uh, for next year. Because Aaron Rodgers, they say, hey, he's trying to come back this year with the Jets. But then he said he ain't retiring either. So if he don't come back this year, then he's certainly going to come back next year too. So some people think this could be like Aaron Rodgers saying, come on, JK, hey, come to New York, JK. And I do think that J.K. is going to have that opportunity um, because I, I don't think that the Baltimore Ravens, even if they do end up re-signing him, I don't think initially that they'll sign him right away. I think they'll give him some time. And I think J.K. will take some time because they're not going to put the franchise tag on him. I think he'll be a free agent at least for a little bit, and he'll get to look for some other opportunities in some other places. So shout out to J.K. It was nice seeing him, nice seeing him in good spirits, nice seeing him laughing and whatnot, joking around and whatnot, just in a real, real good mood. So Shout out to him. I, I, watching what's going to happen with him this offseason, that's going to be nice. That's going to be not nice, but it's going to be interesting seeing just the way that J.K. goes. But we'll cross that road when we get there.